is that success because mm -hmm. it's been so quick yet so good. And you can actually say the same thing For about Lo Longju, exactly. except they converted the final. They yeah. actually continued to win and became <laughs> the LCK champion. So there is so much more confidence and weight behind their strength. But will they play? AD carry, protect him, Arden <laughs> sensor, Khan on a tank. I love the fact that they're doing what G2 did and saying, uh -huh. let's ban their Janna first of all, and maybe even the Lula, L Lula, Lulu, Lula. to get rid of some of these Arden sensor supports. I think it's what Longju should do, right? They so stubbornly and successfully stuck to their style during the LCK final and were rewarded for it. That's engaged support, slightly more utility focused AD carry like an Ash or a Varus, and then you get that carry top laner because you brought your utility and your engage from your bottom lane, which even though Khan is that superstar who carries, that's enabled because of how good Prey and Gorilla are. Now Lulu is still open. Got banned there from Mortals. Anymore. Otherwise, Longju could have just first picked it for themselves. But the two main Arden Sensor supports are gone. You can still play Kama, you can play Tarek. There are plenty left, but these are the ones who really make the game just go full late game. Longju is a team, though, who needs Gorilla to be on a playmaker. You cannot rely on your jungler Kuz to be the main engage. And Khan obviously likes to get his last pick top laners who can split push. And that's why Gorilla is so important for engage and Prey as well. Yeah, or to have the flex pick because Kuz actually <laughs> hasn't played a Jarvan jungle the entire summer split. Right. I think the Jarvan is actually a bigger denial pick from Immortals because they love to pick it extremely early in the draft and swap between Flav and Smithy. And we got a whole new ball game here to pick yeah. though, with the Ezreal jungle locked in early. Okay, okay. Smithy wants to play <laughs> aggressive. This champion, there was so much discussion regarding him making it on to the, to the main stage here at Worlds because in scrims, you can play Ezreal, you can go crazy. They are a million kills in the early game. It's fine. On the big stage, if you do not execute the early game perfectly with an Ezreal jungle, you lose. Because if he's behind, he's pretty much useless. X Midi is a jungler with fantastic early game who understands mm -hmm. what to do in the early game. And Immortals is a good early game team. I want to see if they can execute this against Longshoot. It's fine. They had that back in the days of Velocity. We've seen Ezreal jungle for a long time in North. No, I'm just kidding. We will have to see. I mean, X Midi puts a lot of pressure on himself but also is a very big leader of that team, so may be able to control that pressure very well. Yeah, and if Longju locks in this Talia, it's so similar to a lot of the stuff that they were executing in Korea the whole regular season. Talia, his most picked mid laner, yeah. that can go top lane, and I'm, I would not be surprised if that Jarvan is a top laner, but they're gonna hold out on actually locking that in until they see what Immortals huh. has for themselves. It's such a good start for Longshu in terms of the comfort with the Talia. We just saw Crown in the last game have a fantastic performance on it. We know these LCK mid laners can really shine on a champion that's focused around the communication of you know setting up plays in the side lane and then playing these late game team fights where you're just killing the tank in front of you. Talia can do both, and it's mm -hmm. why it's such a powerful pick for them. That Rise locked in for Poe Belter. We'll be able to scale up himself this game, but also be able to deliver that crowd control power for Smithy to do that damage on the Ezreal for the true shot rushes to hit with the other crowd control of the Chain of Corruption. And now the second band phase. Khan finds his chase yeah. band and the Renekton as well for the side of flame. I mean, and this is the flexibility that Longju have afforded themselves. Jace and Renekton, as well as Jarvan, were the three most played top laners for Khan. But what's interesting is Renekton and Jarvan were the two most played top laners for Flame. So getting the Renekton straight out of there, getting the Jace right out of there, you're shrinking these champion pools. Uh, and I really wonder if you're going to see a Cho'Gath ban here from Longju as well, because that is the go-to power pick on this patch. It's just not something we've seen that much of from Flame. We've had three of them, but two of them so far. A possible third in this game. As this is our first game out of Group B. We just had two in C. Longju and Immortals from Group B here. As we figured out, six seconds left for Longju's final ban. I find, the, I find the, the Rakan ban as well. Also very interesting from Immortals with, of course, Saya already being banned a long time ago and mm -hmm. Shustana locked in. I think Alistar is almost a bigger pick for Ooh. Gorilla or the Thresh. Uh, he can play, obviously, Ollie here wants yeah. to try and counter that with the Morgana, but you can definitely still play Alistar against it. And you can just Q flash and she doesn't have time to Black Shield. Yeah, I do think there's some more texture with this Morgana pick as well, though. Uh, only because even thinking back to the spring before Ole went God mode in the summer split, Morgana was his pick. 
And he picked it way before it was in yep. meta. On top of that, I'm expecting the Stoneborn Pact Arden Sensor Morgana to go with their double AD carry team. So it's looking to get the late game where Longju is just continually drafting wow. the exact same way they did in the LCK, regardless of what the patch is. I mean, if that's the case, you would expect an Alistair, or is this the time for the switch up? Is he gonna try and counter the Morgana here, saying, you know what, you can't really kill me in lane, so I feel safe doing this? I'm still looking at then either the Alistar or it looks to be a Karma that he's actually thinking about. Will, of course, bring Arc wow. Sensor as well. Mm -hmm. Very strong lane phase coming from Karma. Definitely uh, something you have to respect. And launch you now with that draft where you don't need to help that bot lane at all. The Karma and the Tristana will do more than find 2v2, and you can play around topside. Yeah, they're going to play around topside. Longju knows that, Immortals knows that, SKT knew that in the final, and they couldn't stop it. So I can't wait yeah. to see if Immortals can stop it, because Longju, they're going for it. That's the third most picked champion for Khan in the summer split, and the most picked champion for Cuz to play around that top side. A lot of power and damage coming from this Longju top position. Immortals find a bit of a tank in flame. Could be helping them if they go late game, but then you have Prey on that Tristana. You have that bot lane art and sensor coming through. There's going to be terrifying. We've seen this uh, jungle matchup as well in the play ins where Kha'Zix gets picked into the Israel. If you get past the first few levels, this Kha'Zix here will have so much kill pressure mm. against Israel. You're very squishy as a jungler when you're off, funny enough, an AD carry flying around. If this Kha'Zix gets to level 6, he gets onto you, he can even use his stealth effect a little bit to dodge around and you can't really hit him. It's a kill for the Kha'Zix and it's a very nice composition that's been drafted here by Longju to really have that aggressive jungler that can invade and push priority in mid for BDD to then say, is it time to go top lane? It's probably time to go top lane and then <laughs> you can try and tower dive that Maokai. We'll have to see what these teams have for each other. About to be on the Rift. Longzhu versus Immortals, starting off our Group B games here at Worlds 2017. We'll have to see how it goes in. The Ezreal Jungle versus Kuz's Kha'Zix. As we see now, Immortals wanted to be on this stage for quite some time, get their chance. Yeah, and much like the last game had very similar style teams in G2 and Samsung, I think the same is true in this game for a lot of reasons. They're summer split teams that really just recently found their stride. They both change a little bit from the meta. Immortals always picking way more CC than other teams and allowing Ole to play different support pool. And even now you can see pulling out the jungle Ezreal as a higher priority than most other teams would do. Both of these teams are very committed to playing their game. And it's a fast one. They both love playing very fast. So I hope we get to see a lot of action. Let's chase. Well, they might actually try and catch someone in there. It was checked by Gorilla. He didn't find anything. Everyone just ends up backing away. But two deep both plays by Mortals. And when there is an wow. Ezreal jungle, you should get your fast game because he needs to be aggressive early on. Obviously, there is good late game insurance with the Maokai in here with the Rage Blade virus huh? as well for, for late game fights. But in order for Xmithy to have an impact, then we're looking at the early game. Yeah, and the jungle Ezreal wants to get red buff. Then you can go somewhere with Storm Raiders and proc it by landing a Q. Or you can get your double buff level three and immediately invade the jungle. That can actually still outtrade the Kha'Zix this early. It's just later when it yes. doesn't necessarily do it. So that's why we see the change up by Immortals to get the very early wards. Because Xsmithy wants to know where Cuz started. So he can try and exploit this rookie jungler. We forget a lot of times that Cuz is a rookie jungler because he has found so much success. But that could definitely be a place where Immortals is looking to attack. I like this uh, level one start here from Immortals as well. With the Morgana waiting in that tri bush knowing there's a leash happening so that you can just delay Longshu to get to lane just a mm -hmm. little bit at least. Have Cody Sun just get the push early. Xmithy of course will not have any issues here in the jungle on his own. Once he gets blue buff, it's the fastest clear speed of junglers in the current meta yeah. from this Ezreal and you just want to abuse that as much as possible. Get out on the map, fight. So he's going for the quick level three, focusing on single target camps. That's what the jungle Ezreal does because it's much harder for him to clear those multi camps. Uh, curious though, knowing that Cuz started red side, he doesn't have that invade. And he also messes up the patience on the Grom, so it resets. Not a good look for Xmithy here. Definitely gonna slow him down a bit. Maybe he hops over the side, saves the 
Arcade shift for a little bit more movement, and he's going to get that red buff there proc we go. on this bot lane. Warded yet, so he's going to make it behind him. They have the mantra shield to get out fast, also the jump, and they're going to be making it real quick. They see the play happening here from the side of IMT and say, do not like. And this is such a standard thing to try and do against Longshu. Try and see if you can kill Prayer Gorilla in the early game, but they are probably the best bot lane in the world at defending against ganks because they get left alone so often in these games while Longshu yep. playing topside. They're used to this one and they just back away instantly. Exactly. It's what enables their strategies more than anything else actually is how well they can play defensively. If you look at the jungle proximity percentages, uh, Kuz's proximity to the bot lane is extremely low. It's the lowest of the junglers at the World Championship, and that's because he's always sitting mid-top, and that enables BDD to get a lead, or Khan to get a lead, and BDD to all top lane. And other teams don't play this way because their bottom lanes would get destroyed, but that just doesn't happen to Longju. They often sometimes even win in those situations, but it's tough this game as well, as x is now being from here. A lot of these are coming up as well. Pobalt are obviously farming there. Uh, we're we're going to come up with the kill, but... He is affecting lanes. Smithy has been going right. through a few here and there and making sure he has a little bit. The kill comes up, it's the bag of chips. Yeah, both uh, lanes from Longshu realizing that this Israel in the first few levels mm -hmm. will have the gank and pressure right. mm -hmm. uh, and letting the Kha'Zix just farm. Like, you don't really want him out of the map this early. Try and get him all the way to level 6 if you can and then start really challenging this Israel because like, Smithy now, due to two ganks, are actually down a level uh, yeah. at the moment. He didn't even get a, a summoner spell. He just poked a little bit, and that's not enough for him. Exactly, and the 300 gold Cuz now has in his pocket over Rick Smithy as well as the level is basically the gold lead you see for Longju. So the early game definitely advances Longju. Thanks to Longju absorbing that pressure in the bottom lane. Look at what it's costing. Six CS and maybe 100 gold. They're going to be just fine. I actually also want to go back to the point you were making before here, Jad, about Prey and Gorilla. I think... While Khan obviously is the guy we highlight a lot and a lot of people mm -hmm. talk about because he's making the big flash in plays, like the backbone and the star players on Longshu is in fact Gorilla and Prey. Like, yes. as you said there before, no one are able to play just to one side if your other side gets ganked and dies. And the fact that these guys have been doing this for so many years now as well, mm -hmm. being like one of the best bot lanes in the world and finally, you know, take down SKT as well with that one for Longshu, it's an amazing story with these two guys and they deserve all their, you know, Highlights they've now been able to create with this team. Love in the mid lane, but too close to the turret for BDD to go hard on Pobalter's low mana bar. Cuz waiting patiently in the jungle here. Both junglers level level four, and X Smithy, he knows. Yeah. He knows something's going on. Very smart jungler, X Smithy is. Uh, right there, knowing that the castles could be waiting, completely avoids him. Uh, and Cuz is going to come up empty, even if he does get some deep vision. Very smart. As we were saying, his rookie year, one of the youngest players last year to reach China and Korea, number one of the ladders, and the youngest to do so as well. This guy really tries to fight and make himself better all the time. Yeah, he's now able to communicate as well to his bot lane that Ezreal was not showing top side, so he needs to be down bot yeah. side. He's probably killing a camp. Just be ready for a potential gank. And as soon as a Immortal's bot lane moves forward, Longshu just ran, ran away. Like They're like, you know what? There might be an Israel here. We're not going to deal with this. They're playing so safe. And it's all communication. So when you go into the enemy jungle and you don't find the jungler, well, you know, okay, he's on the other side of the map and you can then pull them. BDD pulling the minions out. Oh, lost one. Nice job, though, trying to sweep up what he can. Stalls him out in front of the minion, or in front of the turret. To put Pobelter in a bad spot. They may look for Cuz to come at mid at some point. Really hasn't seen too much in ganking form other than just kind of being a nuisance to it smithy so far and doing a good job of it yeah and still looking at the game it's it's neck and neck right here uh for long Ju and immortals so they haven't found that opening or that crack that they can exploit really for either team and immortals is a team that plays the game uh very well well as well as long Ju, so right. yeah still a very close game the difference is just Longshu saying we want to wait for our junglers to get level 6. Immortals saying we don't want to wait for that. We actually <laughs> want to get an advantage before it. Yep. So the fact that Longshu have just been able to kind of sit back and not lose anything to this Ezreal is very big for them. And this Ezreal was first rotation yep. for x -Men. He was like, from the get-go saying, I'm going to play this. I'm going to beat these guys in the early game. Now the R evolve for the Kha'Zix allows him to be so much sneakier in the jungle and often bypass a lot of the wards. Uh, go-to Kazakh's evolution nowadays. 
It's funny though, I actually, I see both, you know, with also going like Q early. Mm -hmm. And typically the junglers are saying, at least in Europe, like if you get a kill early, go for R, play super aggressive on the map, use that extra mobility, just continue to like force fights. And But if you don't get any early kills, just take the Q, it's a bit safer, it will give you more value in a team fight uh, as well. But this one here costs, went straight for R, despite it actually not doing anything early, and I feel like that is the best option for him. And we still really need to track the top side. Uh, and how well Flame can absorb the pressure from Khan, who's gone Tiamat and is trying to shove him in a lot. Notice the control wards by Longju as well, is setting up the wrong path for Chita, and that's why Mortals is going for Sal. Last chain of corruption, Prey gets hit, he's able to jump out, True Shot Barrage to come out behind here, who's got the follow-up damage, and it goes under Gorilla! This is gonna be the warp out, teleport in, Khan gets oh. himself in a bad spot, top lane now to Flame. And this is what we see from Immortals in the NALCS as well. Great setups. Poe Builder was moving from that mid lane very early, calling, okay, now we can go for the fight. And Cody Sun with that R flash engage onto Prey, locking him in place, meaning, okay, there is at least one member we can hit at the moment. Uh, Prey might even want to look for more because we got a Talia coming around. Here's Talia. There's no teleport for Ole. He gets caught out in the end. Soul Shackles go down, but he is going to be shackled up by the likes of Longzhu as it's now one to one. Did not expect Khan to stick around. They thought he was going to be running towards topside as the teleport wasn't matched by Flame, but by sticking yeah. around and also roaming down BDD, where they didn't actually have the control wards, they pick up a kill. So it's not like they can only play through the top lane like some top lane focused zombies. They make another play <laughs> and they even out the game. Well, what we saw there was the fact that Poe Bella could move first in mid. So he went down, made his play. When he leaves, you got to respect that now it's the enemy mid laner's turn because he's obviously going to push the wave while you're gone. And when you're stuck in under your tower, killing the remaining minions, he's leaving. Yeah. And you gotta be ready for him to join a potential fight. Down the bot lane, Immortals were not ready for it. And that's why they end up giving a kill over to Longshore and Infernal Drake. I was gonna say, Infernal feels good on a Jarvan, Kha'Zix, yeah. Chris, Talia. A lot of damage there. Let's see this again. Yeah, I mean, hitting level six, going for the flash, but not actually looking to change the CC. It's like Ole and Cody send us both of shots. So it means they have to commit a lot really like the Realm Warp afterwards as they get the Realm Warp out. Notice the TP cancel. I would expect Khan to actually cancel his as well, but he doesn't. Because on the board, see a pretty good record throughout the LCK Summer Split as he hands off blue to BDD in the mid lane. Another one who has been touted as one of the greats coming out of the LCK soon and still has a long way to go. But Baker says you got to beat him multiple times to be a legend. Yeah, also, <laughs> uh, for those of you who haven't been following LCK closely, BDD was this super hype player about a year and a half ago, but didn't find a right, huge amount of right. success and uh, finally had his breakout split, so to speak, averaging less than a death a game. Only died two times in the four games he played in the finals of LCK. So Best KDA player in the world. Uh, that is what some have said <laughs> as well, but then counters to that say he actually pushes up a lot and w makes a lot of plays it's just that he's always making yeah. the right one so manages to avoid the deaths let's see if Ola can get something happen right, in the brush the control okay. has been great for them Cody Sun possibly for it last hit to Ole so clean and simple it's such a smart setup when you have a black shield as well to stop prey from shooting Cody Sun away from the fight so this virus will always just sit there and get enough damage off Cody Sun is delaying his own rage play by going for Ninja Tappy here, respecting the fact there's a Javan and a Kha'Zix potentially joining fights in the bot lane to try and kill him. But that was a nice setup, and it all comes down to Ole landing that binding. That's the support that has banned, been banned away from him over and over. As Immortals get their vision control going, that Fog of War is going to be so deadly because of Ole. He's going to keep making those plays. And one thing we need to track the later we get into this game is how well do Longshu play without Gorilla on a champion where he can create plays, where he mm -hmm. can engage fights? Okay. He's sitting back on this Kama here. He's actually telling it, telling Khan that it's up to him to start the fights. And that's not a standard setup for Longshu. You can see Gorilla already have died twice in this lane as well. So 
Immortals have actually been able to win this early game slightly, but it's still a very good win for them. Exactly. In the North American LCS, Immortals did play around bot lane extremely well with how Xmithy could make those ganks. And we talk about how Frank Gorilla is so good at playing defense, you don't expect them to die, but Immortals clearly not changing their focus. They're going bot again and again. So he throws the binding down, pushes Gorilla up towards Xmithy with that direction, possibly onto Prey now. Nature's Grass just misses. No, it gets him! And they come up with another kill! It's all planned in advance here from Immortals, placing that ward deep in the lane, waiting for Longshu to push forward, and then using that TP from Flame. Great setup, should be a tower in the bot lane as well, using Ezreal ulti to clear the wave in top. Yeah, and right now Immortals, they're really trying to snowball this game. They're executing their game plan, regardless of their opponents right here. Yeah, you say you can't actually shut down Prang Gorilla, they're refusing to play that top side game, and it's working so well for them. Ole, Cody Sun, using that initiation combo to make the plays. And Arden's sensor being completed means they're at a pretty strong house. It's definitely much easier to shut them down when Gorilla is on a squishy combat that can't really escape once you get CC'd by anything, really. Yeah. Exactly, and you do have to wonder where Longju falls in this spectrum because Alistair was on the table. They there. could have had that pick, but they opted for the Arden sensor support as well. And Ole, Ole, with the control ward, gets the binding to start the fight. Quick follow-up, we even see Ezreal ulti down there, and then this Black Shield, making sure Prey cannot get Cody Sun out of the fight and actually keep the Kama alive here. And this is now the follow-up with that TP being ready on the side of Immortals, and it's just a great setup, and no way really out for the yeah. for Gorilla. Prey, on the other hand, actually getting hit by the last part of that long cat. I really like the choice of Flame there to flash Twisted Advance Gorilla because Prey was going to try and buffer that CC with the well-timed rocket jump yeah. anyway. Then they still got him with the ultimate at the end. Well, even though he probably could have avoided the route, I don't think there was any way that Prey was getting out of that one. So the classic long shot game plan of getting Khan ahead in the early game, it's not happened. They have not been playing around topside in this game here. The bot lane that normally will never die to these ganks with this combo pin actually shut down completely and Immortals sitting with a 3,000 gold lead at this point here. No race play just yet for Cody Sun. Will most likely come for him on the next time he goes back. And then he's going to be super strong with this Ardent Sensor support next to him. And Immortals, they can keep playing around this duo lane. They have no reason to stop. Just keep moving towards Cody Sun. And of course, this Morgana here landing bindings. Yeah, and Xmithy is basically living up there, and it's one of the ways he's avoided Cuz's counter jungling as well, is because he's just always with his bottom lane, hoping to catch a binding somewhere. Misses by about a pixel, and Cuz might be looping around for a mid lane play. He's oh, back again. running circles. Here we go. Left two. Mark you gotta find someone at some point. Goes down the ulti again, making sure he's at least safe in oh, this back excursion. Again. Back again. Yep. Retracing his steps. Feels like with the lane pushed up here, they might have a little bit of aggression, but now he's trying to dodge Poe Belter. He gets the call from BDD that Ryze is not in lane. Just turn it out. And now they'll be all right. But there yeah, they go. Looks like they're gonna have to. Shot towards Gorilla. A rooted prey. Soul Shackles just in range, but they actually have to back off. Poe Belter warps he's really up low. after he's taking a lot of damage. Khan gets the teleport in. Is this the turnaround for Log2 Gaming? Ole's gonna be going down. They lose the support, but that's two kills. Cash going over to Longzu. Nick Smithy just living as BDD's on the edge of that fight. So they lost that tower and a kill here. Immortals looked like a team that knew they should not try and defend the tower because they had no teleport uh -huh. from Flame. But in the very end, someone made a call to actually go for the fight and that backfired. Yep. Instantly Khan joins. There's five members from Longshot on the top side with Talia also coming in and that's now a kill for them. Sometimes when so many plays have gone well before around the bot side, you get a little over eager, but I absolutely agree to Fischio. Flame could have traded turrets, or no, he couldn't have traded turrets on the bot side anyway. This was just an indefensible one, so to speak. They landed enough CC, they could get it, and they thought the Realm Warp would be able to get it, but the circles that Cuz was running in that jungle actually found Paul Belter. And that's what took him to 40% health before the fight and made it so they definitely couldn't match that play from Monk. Exactly, just by sitting there, Knowing, okay, Ryze needs to at least run into the jungle to right. actually ult to the top lane. Mm -hmm. Eventually, you get something. Oh, Ryze just stays mid, and then you get a free tower. Really smart play by Cuz to wait around that jungle, uh, predicting the defense of Immortals on that top side turret. And we'll see if they end up fighting around this Drake, but Longju again expended the teleport on that play, means Immortals will now have that teleport advantage for playmaking. And despite Cody's not getting, you know, any, all these assists in the early game, sadly for him, no kills. 
item wise there is static shift and bf sword now for prey on his side so he's actually looking very good and that's an adk that lost lane yeah they have found him though instantly going down he just got himself in a very troublesome position while Cuz tries to play that distraction game. He's also trying to pull Immortals around to say, use your resources and spacing on me. They do so and actually come up with an Ocean Drake after that. It's fun to see how much CC Mortals oh that came my word. Word. Ooh, Nice shot by BDD pulling out one last Q and volleying down Xmithy. He did not expect Atelier to move down there and actually meet him in the jungle. But we have seen a few kills now from Immortals side where they have so much single target CC that's so easy to land. Like, you point and click with Ryze or the Maokai, you follow up with a Binding or a Varus ulti, and you keep someone in place for multiple seconds. And again, you don't need to land a skill shot first, because you have Ryze and Maokai there. Mm -hmm. Chaining CC has been Immortal's bread and butter during the regular season, but one thing that has been their Achilles heel uh, is their tendency to have random one-off deaths, whether it's Cody's son or X-Smithy, that has prevented them from closing out the games. As you mentioned, though, Flash Twist advance into a whole bunch of CC and Cuz is dead into the Ocean Drake. But here, he just wants to shift over for some wards. But BDD predicts it, basically. No other reason to be roaming into that spot. Picks himself up a very clever kill. Cody son also picking one up for himself at 104. Those early kills to Ole. Didn't allow Cody's son to really spike as much as he wanted to with an early Rage Blade. Rift Herald here will help to open up the map for Immortals, but we were talking about that vision before. A lot of it's on the bot side. They haven't moved to top. So we got to be careful about this exit. We'll secure the Rift Herald at least. Flame actually went back, but TP yeah. would be ready. And we have two members from Long just sitting in the mid lane, so they could not fight. Immortals will get that one, and hopefully for them it rewards them with a tower. It is so even in gold, though, mm -hmm. with Immortals actually being ahead 3,000 gold just, I feel like, a few minutes ago. Yeah. Then we started playing top lane, they gave Longshore a tower, and they started getting back in, make it even. Exactly. If we've learned anything from watching any other region play against Korea at Worlds, it's the 2,000 gold does not win you a game. <laughs> you need Sadly to do not. so much more to take them down. One minor misstep from Immortals, and it's an even game once again with a two-item Tristana who has an Ardent Sensor, but the tank line isn't necessarily there for Longju. We see a very aggressive right. build coming out from Khan, a serrated Dirk after the Warrior enchantment for Cuz. So Longju isn't going to be able to set up these super disciplined team fights and will always run the risk of Flame doing that flash twisted advance on anyone exactly. and picking up a kill. And that's actually why I'm very concerned for Longju's team fighting. Like, obviously, it's going to come down to individual skill with like Prey and BDD having good positioning, but. When it is so simple for Immortals, when they have Flash available to lock down a guy, and they are four squishy members on Launcher's side with this Kha'Zix of course, of course building full damage, it should be very easy to get the initial kill that allows you then to win the, the fight. This is a good uh, spot for the Rift Herald. They have already dealt enough damage to this tower, and we'll just secure it. Launcher backs away. Khan wants to try and get some damage bot lane, but Maokai is already there to defend. Yeah, Flame doing quite a good job shadowing Khan this game, and they have prevented him from necessarily taking over, but something more about uh, Longju and their way they play around Khan, it's not like he's smashing lane every game. They're also giving him a ton of mid to late game resources to make him a very huge late game force. So his CS percentage uh, post 15 minutes is extremely high for top laners, and his gold distribution is also extremely high uh, for Longju. So he will still be a very scary Jarvan who's going to be looking to one shot you know, a Varus or a Morgana right. in the late game. One of the reasons we see Cody Sun has gone with the Ninja. He's cruising around, soaking up all the experience he can that is left for him right now. Cause it's just on that top side, making sure that we carry to stay safe. Everything else is cons and the rest. Flame and him will meet in just a few. Actually, Flame peels off. Maybe to protect something that's going on towards the top side. His teleport's up, so this might just be to get some wards and clear some out. It's also very good for Immortals that they can have Flame with this armor build, just sit and hold the Jarvan for as long as possible. And BDD, if he goes down to that bottom lane to try and kill him, well then suddenly Baron is open. And when you have Rage Blade Varus, like Baron dies quickly, Ezreal as well with so much single target DPS. Immortals will always have that threat at least to, to rush towards it, and it's making it hard for Longshu to actually go to Khan's lane. And this will end up in, you know, team fight versus team fight. And I'm looking just at Immortals always finding that initial pick with all the chains mm -hmm. you see. 
And that's going to be the question. How well can these teams control vision? And who can get that first initial pick? Because yes, Flame is the tank line that can get that. But there's four other squishy people on Immortals. Pobelt, they're one of the few Rises I've seen who doesn't go Abyssal Mask, is still opting for that Rod of Ages makes him more squishy when he's going into these team fights. It just depends on how many AP champions he's facing. Whoa. In this game here, there's an AD jungler and AD yeah. top lane. So he's like, I don't need that MR. I can just go for a Rod of Ages. If he's against more AP, he's probably going to go Abyssal Mask. One more towards the bottom side. Three that hook up into Immortal's jungle. We saw the damage there from Pobelter. If any more crowd control had hit Cuz, he'd be gone. And Ole does not have a chance to get the Dark Bindings out as they just stand in mid lane face to face here. Here, wards are now trying to be cleared. Immortals taking that ground back as Long Zoo are able to find themselves a little bit of ground in the mid game. They back, and we'll see what they come out of base. Yeah, but with the back, it means Immortals has a window to push pretty aggressively here in the mid lane. Still have the Black Shield if any type of engage was attempted by Longju. And they're trying to set up for this Infernal Drake. They want to equalize the boosted power from this Drake. Do not want the second one going over to Longju, which increases the threshold for Longju to get that one shot with something like charge. Very, very close. Looks like they're just going to let this wave even out. Bot lane's getting crushed in right now. Can't be handled by Flame. Looks like they're going to have to wait for the fight. Yeah, mid lane priority always so important when you're trying to fight for these objectives in the river. Another thing is getting early control watch down when you have Morgana is fantastic too. Try and sneak away and find someone. There it is. The CC. The one, two, three, four, five punch coming in from Immortals. Prey could be the next, but the crowd control is on. Cooled down. Nature's grasp just slipping by the top side of the fight and flame definitely has to be careful. You see all of the damage that Longzu has and they know where to put it. And this should just keep happening in this game here, because Longshu was trying to sneak around the big wall, saying, okay, we can't really face you in the river, that control watch, you have too much CC, and still, they managed to find them. They're trying to threaten Baron, though. It's rather ambitious as the Drake goes down, but they are on it. All right, Xmitty coming up. His fight is going to be down, but it will be up for the time. They're gonna he get it. Get there. They have enough damage to make it happen. Ole, it's up to you. Can he get the damage? They're gonna fight. He cannot. Soul Shackle goes down. The rest of the team's trying to get out and instantly zeroed out. Ole means Khan could be finding himself in the same situation as he stayed too long. Having him with Baron on the side lane would be huge if he can put out the pressure. But it looks like he goes down in the end. And the rest of the team will be able to work with Baron and three. Even then, Baron in a two-for-one kill trait is a great macro call there by Longju yes. to secure that objective that Immortals was going to be able to pressure with their pick that absolutely is critical in keeping them in this game. That maybe even gives them the lead. Such a fast series of events right there. I mean, yeah, we're talking seconds here. You cannot hesitate with this call because then Immortals will make it in here in time to stop this Baron. So the fact they are so quick to go towards it is actually quite amazing. But obviously, uh, Immortals will get a few kills in return. As long as they can defend now and stall, they still got that Infernal Drake on their side mm -hmm. for a bit of extra scaling. Yeah, and Infernal Drakes are not equal for both teams. If one team has more benefiters of AP and AD, uh, in this case, like the AD Jarvan versus the Tank Maokai means one person that benefits from the Infernal and one person that doesn't really as much. So slightly more effectiveness from the Infernal Drake. Uh, for Longju, but still an incredibly close game. Let's see what the idea of Longju is now that they have this Baron. Obviously, we see Prey and Gorilla side by side. Those two not leaving each other. The rest of the three looks like to be towards that bot lane. Baron's gone. Get that bottom turret down and let these two protect mid. Oh, Prey's uh, oh, Prey. quite strong in this game here. Uh, already sitting on basically two full items that two hops. That's all as well. it takes. And then Xmithy goes down, and suddenly this Baron buff now means that yep. uh, Longju yep. can also push for some towers. No Xmithy, Cody's son, very low. It's those small mistakes from Immortals that keep costing them, and it has been true uh, so much during the regular season. Cody's son steps a little too far forward. You've got an Ardent Sensor Trist that runs you down, and then everything just gets used to chase. So this is at least another turret for them, maybe more, as Xmithy's still dead for another 20 seconds. Bow belts are on the same score line, but we haven't been able to see the power. Longju in too much control. The inhibitor turret in their eyes here. 27 minutes in. 
Full Belcher on the bottom side of the fight. A double cataclysm going on to Cody's son. Ole goes down immediately as Paul Belcher still looking to deliver the damage from the back, from the side. He can't find his way in his face. Flame is in a 4v1. Prey goes to the front side of the fight. There it is. Cuz goes down to the hands of Paul Belcher. Belcher and he is just trying to flex his muscle, but doesn't have that finishing damage. Doesn't have enough teammates behind. Here comes the Smithy. Paul Belcher still on the run. Have Long Zhu overstayed their welcome. And it looks like it could be just right. BDD backs up. Paul Belcher just on the edge. Zanyas goes down and BDD's gonna volley this one home. Prey with the kill secured. Just like that, Long Zhu does not relent. The one bit of damage they get on Cody's son turns into this, which is an absolute bloodbath and an inhibitor down for Long Zhu. Oh, and we kept talking about the comm, see how Immortals could find that first pick against all the squishies on Long Zhu, but then we just see Great shot calling to secure Baron, and then fantastic play afterwards to use the Baron to really pressure down Immortals. And it's these very quick calls that just makes these Korean teams so good and so hard to beat. And that's not to take away from the game-saving play Paul Belter made at the end of this fight, because with X-50 down and with this clean engage from Longju to take Cody Sun very low and then watch Cuz around the backside finish off Cody Sun because he stays in stealth for so long, the game could end here. If Paul Belter doesn't get off this massive combo to get the spread from his Q onto pretty much everyone in Longju, they could have ended the game with that Baron buff, uh, but they do not as they chase through to try and get some more kills. And just when you think Paul Belter can also kill BDD, nope, you get to see great kiting with the Talia steps. Out of range here also with the ulti, good flash and a lot of damage onto Paul Belter, forcing him then to use the defensive zone. Yes, and obviously he's going to die as soon as he gets out of it. Yeah, and BDD has played nearly a perfect game here. They have the flash down on Pogoth as well. He's trying to get out. Smithy could not. Realm worms out. Smithy finding the 45 second death timer and 45 seconds mean Longju has a long time to work in a 5v4 here. Teleports down as that was Khan coming in, so it looks like they're obviously here to stay and take down bottom inhibitor. And we've now seen Longshu without running again, engage on Gorilla, use the Talia walls so effectively to create catches, and then also just speeding up Prey, sending him forward every single time. Cody Sun blinks, Cody Sun goes down. That's gonna be another kill coming in for Prey, and Khan is the initiator in this one, not stopping a second to think about it because the team is right behind him. And they're not letting everyone respawn, and they just keep getting the picks. 30 minutes in, quite fast games to start off the group stage of World. Long Zhu going to take down Immortals and start off their group stage in Group B, 1 and 0. So much of this game was about who could start the fights because you had so many damage dealers on both sides. And what was so interesting is both teams had many picks that were successful. What decided it is what happens after how well you can convert those small advantages into big ones. And in that one, in that aspect, Longju were decisive victors. Right.